Abin Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is market historian Bob Hoy. He's the chief investment strategist for ChartsAndMarkets.com. Welcome back to the show, Bob. Hi, Jim. I always enjoy our Friday mornings together. And uh, again, this week you'll will have a chance to have a double shot of Bob Hoy because he's also going to be a guest on This Week in Money. Yeah, which, uh, looking forward to that one too. So. Bob, are the traders of long bonds smiling today? <laughs> yeah, the headline with the Fed move was that bond traders were giddy. And yes, they have been very excited. The trend uh, of Oh, since the first of the year, and and uh, long uh, government bonds has been outstanding. Uh, the um, high grade corporates, the LQD, did very well and reached a technical excesses a couple of weeks ago in anticipation of the Fed cut. The other thing that was going on has been that the T bill rate, the three month T bill rate, which reached its high for the move in March has been declining quite uh, sharply. So this is what it the Fed had to cut its administered rate in order to look like it's in charge of a natural decline in money market rates and for this old researcher, when the Treasury bill rate is going up, it confirms that the boom is on. And I sort of explain it by saying, you know, there's demand by speculators for short-term funds, and it sort of moves through the system. And then when the T-bill rate turns down, it says that perhaps the best of the boom is in, and then what subs Consequently, can happen is that the uh, very careful money out there goes to the most liquid items when it sees perhaps a storm coming, and the, the most liquid uh, sector is uh, short-dated treasuries, U.S. treasuries. So um, then the decline in yield is helped by uh, careful money going into the T-bill. It has nothing to do with Fed policy. So what you had here was the um, the yield came down by about 42 basis points before the Fed moved. And then on the day the Fed moved, of course, it went a little lower, so eventually you had a 50 basis point decline in the yield, and the Fed did a 25 basis point cut. But I'm convinced that uh, the reason why the Fed cut the rate was to look like it's in charge of what's happening. And the other one that is is so wrong is that the street um, really thinks that that Fed cut will extend the boom. But if you look back in history, uh, oh, back to the 1873 bubble at least, the, and the senior central bank, uh, the uh, market rates of interest, like a T-bill or equivalent, turn down, saying the boom is over. Then, four or five months later, the federal, the senior central bank, cuts its uh, administered rate. So it's after the fact in this kind of a market, and it's happened again in 1929. The T-bill rate went up until May, that May, and in turning down through the summer said that the the boom was over, and then you had the final flurry with the stock market rallying up to September 3rd, 1929, and then 
rolling over and then crashing. And then the Fed cut its rate uh, in October of that year. So um, this is no surprise, cutting the rate. And it's also um, a very hokey story uh, going with it that it will prop the boom. There was even, I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, where the head uh, of the Fed, at the Chicago Fed, said that uh, cutting the rate would perhaps boost inflation. But they got it all backwards. <laughs> Short-dated interest rates go up with the boom and down with the contraction. And indeed, the fastest part of the decline occurs with the worst part of the bear market. So that this Fed cut is celebrated shows that this market's still pretty naive. And this is actually what was missing for us a year ago at about this time. Uh, you saw excesses in the stock market. And you know that uh, if anything's going to go wrong, it'll be discovered in the fall. And so we noted that what was missing then was that the enthusiasm as the street decides the Fed's going to cut interest rates. Well, that wasn't there last year. So we kind of mulled around and said, well, maybe the senior indexes like the S&P could fall by 20%, and it did. But this year now, you have, of course, still a very highly speculative financial market. And But now you've had the, the extra flip uh, created by the Fed's going to cut, which was very similar to September of 2007, that, that last final rally into about October, the middle of October was on the Fed cut story. And then that was the high, and down she went. So I don't want to be gloomy, Jim, but I'm just pointing out that there are similarities to previous tops of, of bull markets, and uh, we're just following the path. Uh, the uh, enthusiasm this year has been terrific, and it was maybe run into mid-year, and we called that the sunshine phase. And then in August, uh, we figure then you get into the twilight. And then after August, you get into the scary part called the twilight zone, which, of course, is what we used last year. And it certainly worked because that hit in the financial markets and particularly the stock market down to Christmas was it was a severe one. So somehow there's some similarities. We'll have more with Bob Hoy and an answer to a listener's question right after this. I'm Douglas Mason, CEO of Naturally Splendid, symbol NSP on the TSX Venture Exchange. Naturally Splendid is a biotechnology and consumer products company focused on the global cannabis and health markets. Naturally Splendid is expanding distribution in this rapidly growing market with products currently in Canada, the USA, South Korea, Germany, and Australia. To view our comprehensive company presentation and for more information, please visit our website at naturallysplendid.com. Grand Portage Resources Herbert Gold Project in Southeast Alaska highlights increased gold resource, indicated and inferred, of 860,000 ounces, in excess of 10 grams per ton gold. Expansion drilling is planned on the Herbert Gold property for the summer of 2019. Grand Portage Resources trading symbols are GPG on the TSX Venture, GPTRF on the OTCQB, and GPB on Frankfurt. For more information, please visit our website, grandportage.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Bob Hoy. Bob, we have a question from Arthur Brown. His question, what is the likelihood that a debt jubilee, debt forgiveness, would trigger an economic sea change within the banking system? What scale or size of forgiveness would cause a stock market collapse similar to the 1930s or 2009? Now, that's a good question. And, uh, yeah, the debt forgiveness thing, well... In particular, in the U.S., they're talking about it with all of the student loan debt, which is a horror show. But I think it's going to go the other way around, uh, Arthur, that what happens is the stock market breaks, and then the focus will be on how do you service all of this debt. And this is what a 
great bubble is all about. They've also been called new financial errors, where errors, where you can do anything. Recklessness, uh, it prevails. And But what happens is that there's people who take on debt for uh, companies, countries, individuals, for whatever game they're in. And, but at the same time, there is a huge amount of money available to go into reckless items. And because of confidence, people think, okay, I can reach for yield by taking on risk without contemplating what happens. And uh, so, indeed, what happens is that uh, once the boom is over, the economy slows, and people discover that there's no way that the economy can generate enough earnings or cash flow to service the debt. So this then becomes the problem. A lot of debt becomes unserviceable, marked down in price. In some cases, they just go no bid. And it take a few years, of course. And I remember a long time ago, and I've got it in the file, a, a study done by a bond dealer in New York in 1933 on what happened then. It's a very good study, and essentially what it is is it's a debt party. Everybody gets involved, and then afterwards you think about how am I going to service this. So investors become selective and start avoiding issues, and then eventually, as I said, there's no bid. So for Arthur, the situation is the other way around. I think the stock market will break, and then that will focus on the huge problem of servicing the debt. And while you can't say anything about pe people forgiving the debt, uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff just go no bid and just kind of disappear. Uh, uh, and then in which case investors would write off their position as, as a loss. And uh, there could be quite a bit of it. Also part of this problem in unserviceable debt will be the credit rating agencies like Fisk or Standard & Poor's or Moody's. Uh, they get in and start looking at the books and start marking down the credit rating. So you may have a an investment-grade bond, and then with the slowing economy, the ability to service that debt diminishes in which case the credit rating agencies are looking at that and, we'll, and then we'll do the downgrades. And if you're in a really fast market like uh, 2008 uh, contraction, uh, suddenly, you know, they're on some ish debt issues, they're downgrading at three notches all at once, like down three uh, credit ratings, bang, bang, bang. So in a bad market for debt uh, it can uh, conditions can change quickly but as to forgiveness i'm not going to talk about that but as to bonds going no bid yeah that'll happen we'll have more from bob hoy right after this media recognition from bloomberg writers recycling trade publications patented process for 100 percent recovery of critical metals including cobalt lithium nickel manganese aluminum american manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles american manganese trades on the tsx venture amy the u.s amyzf and frankfurt 2 a.m for more information visit americanmanganeseinc.com or phone me larry ray at 778-574-4444 don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're chatting with Bob Hoy. Bob, the U.S. Fed says it's going to hold its first conference ever on climate change what do bankers have to do with the environment oh my god i when i read that one i really couldn't believe it because uh do you adjust the money supply based on what the climate's going to be doing no it's just a, a bureaucratic thing to do to get involved with this it's a bandwagon thing and uh the point of view i've had for a few years now is that the uh Central banking has set itself up as 
managing the economy. And of course, the climate movement is out to manage the temperature of the nearest planet. And so with the Federal Reserve, and these two really go together, with the Fed, the, um, the objective of the people who were first promoting the Fed in 1900, they had, of course, seen that with a financial setback would precede a recession. So as part of the genius of the Federal Reserve System was that as a lender of last resort, it would then be there to prevent um, financial setbacks. So then there'd be no recessions. <laughs> There's been 18 recessions since the Fed opened its doors for business in January of 1914. So quite clearly, any objective person would say, it doesn't work. So the idea of managing an economy is based upon concept that there is a national economy to be managed. But take a look at Canada with a 4,000 mile long border against one of, the mo one of the most powerful economies in the world. And you have the Bank of Canada thinking it can set policy independent of what's going on in the U.S. So there's a fallacy. Uh, it's based upon the concept that there is a national economy, and there isn't. And then their idea that pushing out credit pushes the business excitement is doesn't work either. That's uh, what's called a primitive syllogism. So here you are, and they're now going to join the fools who think that they can set the temperature of the earth. It's foolishness beyond imagination. But also there a, seems to be a, a fair amount of pride and hubris with this. I think some central bankers are probably genuine that they're there to manage the economy. And, uh, of course, there's many probably in the climate movement uh, who think, and this is, now this one really is, shows audacity, and that is that they can con con control the temperature of the earth. Uh, this, this is astounding to me as a, as an old time geologist, geophysicist, um, and I'm amazed by it, but, uh, I think, uh, the two together is, <laughs> combination uh, that is now vulnerable because you're clearly at, at the end of a business cycle and you always get a contraction and it's proportionate to the frenzy of the boom preceding and so we'll get that in which case I think this time the general public will look at the amount trillions of dollars in the U.S. spent by uh, bureaucrats on the tout that they can prevent bad things from happening. So the um, promotion that uh, a committee can manage the economy is about to be tested and it will likely be seen to fail. Then the other one is, of course, the, the notion that, that another committee can manage the temperature of the earth, which is highly improbable. And there are, with the um, declining solar cycle, and now for the last 20 years, it's a built-in cooling force. And uh, I think that, of course, their headline now that they've had some enormous heat waves in Europe, but uh, at the same time you had uh, a section of the Tour de France bicycle race in France canceled because of snow. Uh, I don't think that had ever happened before. So there are sections uh, now in South America getting unusually cold weather in their winter and there are places in North America, Russia, Minnesota recently that are getting unusually cool uh, readings. Uh, this is weather. But at any rate, the uh, the audacity of both these promotions uh, is 
going to be tested over the next year or so, and I think it'll be uh, found to be both of them uh, promotion. So actually, I'm delighted to see that the Fed is announcing a conference on climate change because it makes them then really intimate with the uh, folly that not only can the uh, economy be managed, but also the climate can be. So this, it will, we'll be following it for sure, Jim. Bob, thank you so much for being on the show. Yep, I look forward to next week. My guest has been market historian Bob Hoy. He's the chief investment strategist for chartsandmarkets.com. If you have any questions for Bob, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at How Street. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.